Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous. Oh, the one who has saved us, the one who has healed us, the one who has delivered us, and the one who has redeemed us, and the one who is keeping us, favoring us, and increasing us more and more, us and our children in 2024. According to Psalms 115 verse 14, the Bible says, the Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. Glory to God. That's his commitment to us, to increase us in health, to increase us in wealth, to increase us in faith, to increase us in favor, to increase us in love, to increase us in our hunger and in our thirst for him. Glory to God and in our service to him. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, amen, verse 6, that one planet, one water, but God gives the increase. The Lord is always wanting to increase you in what he's thought and planned for you. Amen. Job said it best in Job chapter 8, verse 7. He says, though our beginning was small, our latter end shall greatly increase. Oh, your end looks better than your beginnings. Your latter looks better than your former. And I declare and decree to you right now that it's getting better and better for you because the Lord said so. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, I trust that you're off to a breakthrough testimony week. Amen. Glory to God that the Lord has been coming through for you and you have been receiving from him that which he's thought and planned for you. I want to welcome all of our amen members, ministers, and leaders, all of our Facebook partners and friends all around the world. We just so appreciate you. Oh, we thank the Lord for you. Glory be to God. I was just praying for you. Amen. Today, uh, according to 1 Corinthians, amen, glory to God, chapter 1, amen, I was praying this prayer over you, amen, all of our members, ministers, and leaders, partners, and friends, I was praying this prayer, and I want you to join with me every day this week, praying this prayer over you and your loved ones. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, amen, through 10, the Bible says, well, let's pick it up in verse 4, through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 through 10. I thank my God always upon your behalf for the grace of God, which is given to you by Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. I thank God that you're partakers of the grace that is up on this ministry, that this grace is being given to you. Verse 5, so that in everything, in everything, in your family, your career, in your business, in all your roles and specific responsibilities, so that in everything, in your health, amen, so that in everything you are enriched by him. In all utterance, knowledge, even as the testimony of how Jesus loved you on the cross is being revealed and confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift as you wait for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is also confirming you unto the end so that you are blameless in the day of his return. Verse 9, for God is faithful. Woo, we can rely on his faithful. He's predictable, trustworthy, reliable. What is he faithful to do? He's faithful to call you into fellowship with him and with Jesus Christ on a daily basis. He woke you up this morning so you can fellowship with him. Woo! So you can have fellowship with how he loved you on that cross. So you can have fellowship with him with what he's doing for you at the Father's right hand. So you can have fellowship with what he's thought and planned for you to do in the earth. He woke you up today. He's kept you alive so he can have fellowship with you. 
Oh, glory be to God. I've been praying that prayer with you all day today, and I'm believing for the manifestation of it in your lives. Glory be to God. Well, praise the Lord. I want to welcome you out to our Word Encounter service. This is the service that God has ordained for us to have an encounter with Him through his word, because we believe that there's one thing that answers everything, and that's the word of God. God has subjected everything in this world to his word. The Bible says in Mark chapter 13, verse 31, that heaven and earth are pass away, but my word will remain forever. In Psalms 107, verse 20, the Bible says that God sent his word and it healed and delivered us from all our destruction. So there's no destructive force of the enemy. There's no sickness and disease that will latch hold to your body that this word will deliver you from. Glory to God because God has subjected Everything in this world, including the devil himself, all the symptoms, all the financial oppression, all the challenges in your family, he subjected it to his word. And all you need is a word because there's one thing that answers everything. What is that? The word of God. Amen. Glory be to God. And this is the setting that you're going to receive your word. Amen. You're going to receive a right word, a sent word, and a word in season that will minister answers and solutions to all your concerns. Amen. Glory to God. You know, Jesus, he conquered everything. He defeated, amen, Satan and all of his cohorts. He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he's seated at the right-hand side of the Father God, Amen. Where all power, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto him. Now, what did Jesus do with this power and authority that's been given unto him? Well, let the Bible inform us in Acts 10 verse 38. Amen. He said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So Jesus took the power and the authority that God has given to him and he used it, amen, to heal and to deliver and to set people free. Well, you may be saying, well, that's what he did when he was on earth. No, Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, amen, Christ Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, glory to God. Amen. He's still healing. He's still saving. He's still delivering. He's still setting people free today. Well, how are you confident that he's going to do it right now? Well, I'm so glad you asked. In Matthew 18, verse 20, the Bible says, Where two or more gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Woo! The same one who raised the dead, the same one who opened the eyes of the blind, the same one who made the lame to walk, the same one who fed 5,000 with two fishes and five loaves of bread. Oh, he's in our midst today. Woo! Glory to God. He's amongst us today. Amen. And the Bible requires us to do one thing in order to receive from him. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6 that without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, he got to do this one thing. What do we have to do? Believe Woo! that he is. Oh, he is the king of kings, the savior of the world. He's a, a healer to the sick, a redeemer to the captive. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to believe that he is. Woo, glory to God. And then you have to believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can you believe that he is? Can you believe that he rewards? Why can you believe? Because what he does is based up on his love for you. And the Bible says faith works by love. So you got to have faith in how he loved you on the cross in Christ. You got to have faith in what he promised you. You got to have faith in what he did for you. Amen. And the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world. What is it? Even our faith. If it's in the world, your faith in Jesus and how he loved you on the cross can overcome it. 
Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 17, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, you got to hear how he loved you on that cross. Amen. How he forgave you, redeemed you, and saved you from all the consequences and penalties of your sins. Woo! Oh, you got to hear, amen, that if God be for you, who can be against you? How do you know he's for you? Because Romans 8 verse 32 says, he, amen, did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely? Give us all things. If God didn't withhold Jesus from us while we were yet sinners, what make us think that he's going to withhold healing, deliverance, prosperity, answer prayer, or anything else good that we need or he promises from us? If he didn't withhold Jesus from us, he's not going to withhold anything else. Why in the world would we allow what we're going through, the symptoms in our body, what people are doing to us, get us to question his love and his willingness to come through for us. Mm. If he didn't withhold nothing from us while we were sinners, especially Jesus, his own son, he denied a relationship with his son so he could have one with us. Don't let what you going through and facing cause you to question his love and his willingness to come through for you. Stay on God's side in how you think in what you say, and what you do. Oh, Romans 3, verse 4, let God be true and everything else a lie. Woo, glory. <laughs> oh, praise God. I feel the presence of God on that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Well, we're going to have some out, uh, out, uh, awesome word tonight. Get your Bibles, your pen, and your notepad so you can follow along with us as we refer to Scripture. You want to set here business-like. Amen. You know, cut everything, every distraction. Amen. I know, amen, it's a lot of things, you know, pulling on you, trying to get, you know, just shut it down right now. Because there's one thing that answers everything, and that's a word. Amen. Glory, you need a word. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. What does he say? It continued. That means that continuance doesn't start until you're tempted not to. Amen. See, continuance doesn't begin until you're tempted not to. Amen. So whatever you do after you're tempted or when you're tempted, that denotes continuance. Amen. So cut everything off. Isolate yourself with this word. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let him unfold the mysteries, the secrets. Amen. The will of God to you and let him minister faith in your heart. Amen. To cause you to rise up. Amen. In Christ. Oh, glory to God. So Jesus can reproduce himself in and through you. So he can convert them testers into testimonies, them trials into triumphs. Glory be to God. Are you ready tonight? Well, let's get back into this word. Amen. Uh, in our last week's service in Word Encounter and in our Bible study, we've been teaching on a series of teaching called Doing the Works of Jesus. Doing the works of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus saved us to do a work. He redeemed us to do a work. Amen. He forgave us to do a work. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 12, it says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Amen. The Lord saved us, redeemed us, forgave us to do a work. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So we talked about three things in this series of teaching on doing the works of Jesus. Number one, we said that we were going to look at the works that Jesus told us not to do. Amen. See, the devil will get, try to get you involved with works that are in opposition to the Lord. Amen. So you got to understand that there are works that we're to refrain from. 
Amen. And then we said that we were going to look at our second point, and that is the works that Jesus instructed us to do. Amen. Glory to God. And then we said we were going to look at our last point, and that is, amen, how to carry out these works. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So let's pick it up, do a little reviewing for those of you, amen, who are just joining, hooking on with us. And also for those of you who, amen, you were here, but you forgot. You let what we have been talking about slip. Or you just need to hear it some more for clarity and understanding. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's get into this word. Let's look at our first point. Amen. What uh, works that Jesus instruct us not to do? Amen. In John chapter 6, we see in verse 27, Jesus says, Labor not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat that endures to eternal life. So he tells us, amen, what not to do or what not to work for. Amen. And there are three things that he doesn't want us to work for. Amen. Number one, he doesn't work, want us to labor Amen. For food. Number two, he don't want us to labor. Amen. To get rich. And number three, he don't want us to labor for status and position. Mm. In Matthew 6, 26, verse 16, he said, he said, uh, what is a man advantage if he gained the whole world and yet lost his soul? Mm. He said, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? So a lot of people are laboring for status and position in exchange for their soul. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 75 verse 5, it is the Lord that raises up one. Amen. And dethrones of another one. That promotion doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. But promotion comes from the Lord. Mm. Amen. Glory to God. And then he tells us in Proverbs chapter 24, 23, look at Proverbs 23, look at verse 4. He said, labor not to be rich, cease from your own wisdom. He said, will you set your eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You ever seen a man running after an eagle? trying to catch an eagle in full flight? What if somebody woke up every day just to try to catch an eagle in full flight? What would you think? That man would be wasting his life. You would think something is wrong with him. Well, that's how Jesus views the person who is laboring for riches, who is laboring for food, who is laboring for status and position. Are oh, you see? He says, cease from your own wisdom. In Matthew 6, starting in verse 30, he said, don't take no thought for what you to eat, wear, or drink. He said, the Gentiles, the people who don't have no covenant with me, this is what they do. Mm. Amen. Glory to God. He said, your heavenly father, take care of you. He said, look at the birds of the air. They neither, they neither uh, toil or reap. He said, but your heavenly father feedeth them. Mm. He said, look at the lilies of the field. They're clothed, not even Solomon. And all of his glory was clothed like one of these. Oh, glory to God. Can you see this today? There are things that he's instructed us not to labor for. In Matthew 6, verse 19 through 21, he tells us, he said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth do it break through, where, where, where thieves corrupt and steal. He said, but lay up treasure in heaven, where moth do it corrupt, no thieves break through and steal. He said, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Mm. Oh my, boy, this is a powerful word. In essence, Jesus was saying, don't waste your life. Don't trade it for something, amen, that is of no value, no eternal value, no lasting value. Man, you'll wear yourself out. You'll die prematurely. You'll have all kind of physical elements and problems. Using your life in opposition to what Jesus told us not to use it for. 
Amen. Glory be to God. Now, we don't labor to be right with the Lord. We labor because we are right. Amen. God only honors the work that we do out of love and faith. Hebrews 6 verse 10 says that, that God is not unrighteous to forget your good works, your labors of love. So if it's not a labor of love, if it's not motivated by faith, he doesn't reward it. It's, he doesn't approve of it. Amen. Glory to God. Your work has to be acceptable to him. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Let us therefore labor so that we may be accepted of him. And God does not accept the labor to get riches, the labor to get food, the labor for status and position. He doesn't approve of that. He told us not to do that. Amen. Glory to God. It's a waste of your life. Whoa, well, what am I to do? What am I to labor for? I'm glad you asked. Amen. Look there with me in Proverbs chapter four. Amen. The first thing you're to labor for is wisdom. Is wisdom. Look at Proverbs chapter four. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Notice there in Proverbs 4, let's pick it up in verse 5. Get wisdom and get understanding. Forget it not. Verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all you're getting, get understanding. This is what you're to labor for. Wisdom, understanding. Woo, glory. Wisdom is the ability to see as God sees. It's the wisest appropriation of knowledge. It's the wisest appropriation of resources. Amen. It's the wisest appropriation of time and energy. Amen. To accomplish the goal. Get wisdom. See as God sees. Woo. Glory to God. Get understanding. See what God is saying. That's what understanding is to see what God is saying. Woo, woo, woo. Glory to God. He said get that. Labor for that. Amen. Glory to God. Number two. Amen. He want us to labor for souls. For souls to be saved. Amen. Glory to God. He said, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. Proverbs 11 verse 30 said, he that wins souls are wise. Woo, glory to God. Amen. John chapter 4, verse 33 through 35. Amen. The Bible says, look out on the fields. Don't say that there are four months and then cometh the harvest. The harvest is ready and ripe, ready to be reaped. Amen. There are people out there starving for salvation, starving for a touch from Jesus, starving for answers and solutions from the kingdom of God, the word of God. And we're to labor with them. Woo, glory. We're to labor for their souls to be saved. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Number three. Amen. We're to labor. Amen. For seed to sow. Seed to sow. Amen. You don't go to work to pay your bills. Or the, or the, no. You don't, you, don't, you don't make a living. No. Jesus made that for you. You make a giving. You give to live and give to live. Amen. Acts 20 verse 35 says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. And then in Ephesians 4 verse 28, he says, let him that stole steal no more, but let him labor, work with his hands for what purpose? So he may eat, pay his bills. No, no labor. So he may have seed to sow and to give to those who have need. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, amen, verse 10, he giveth seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Woo, let God do that. Amen. You labor for seed to sow. He'll give you bread. Woo, and he'll multiply the seed that you're sowing. He'll increase you in the fruits of your righteousness. Jesus said, take no thought what you're going to eat well. Where we going to stop doing that? Amen. Glory to God. 
We should trust our care to him. Yeah, we should go to work, but we don't go to work for the same reason the world go to work for. They go to take care of themselves. We, we, they go to make a living. We go to make a giving. Our giving, our living is in our giving. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> See, the motive that we're going to work is different than theirs. Amen. We're laboring for seed to sow. God cares for us. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, I think it's in verse 29. It says that, that, uh, 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 that him, that he that lends to the poor, or he that gives to the poor shall not lack, shall not lack, shall not lack. Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. I said, amen. I want Jesus to be right. I ain't finna try to use my life to make him wrong. That's a misuse of my life. To use it against the Bible. I'll never get to do that and win. Amen. So I'm not gonna labor for what he tell me not to labor for. I'm going to labor for what he tells me to labor for. And he tells me to labor for wisdom, labor for souls, labor for seed to sow. And then number five, he wants us to labor for rest. Woo, that don't make sense. Laboring for rest. Labor causes a no. Amen. According to the scripture in Hebrews chapter four, verse nine through 11, the Bible said there remains a rest for the people of God. Amen. He said, let us labor that we may enter into that rest. Amen. For he that has entered into this rest has ceased from his own labors. What own labors? Laboring to be rich, laboring for food, laboring for status, laboring for position. I've ceased from that. Woo. I've ceased from my own wisdom. And now I'm laboring. Amen. With the Lord. I'm a co-labor together with him. Woo! Glory to God. I'm not laboring against him. I'm laboring with him. I'm laboring for wisdom. I'm laboring for souls. I'm laboring for seed to sow. And I'm laboring to enter into his rest. Amen. You want to see what this rest look like? Look there in Isaiah chapter 14. Look at verse 3. Amen. The Bible says in that day, the Lord will give you rest. Rest from what? Sorrow. Rest from what? Fear. Rest from what else? Hard bondage. Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. It's Ecclesiastes 2, verse 26. The Lord give it to a man that's good in his sight. What do the Lord give to him for his labor? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Woo! But to the sinner, the man who uses his life to labor in opposition to God, he gives to him travail that he may heap up and gather and give to him that's good before God. Woo! Glory to God. Can y'all see this today? Boy, this is kingdom revelation. And many people, like the Lord showed me, he said, son, what are you trading your life for? Who else is benefiting from you being saved? Who else is benefiting from the resources I've given you? Woo! 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 Boy, that helped me take inventory. Amen. Glory to God. And then number five, I'm laboring for repentance. I'm laboring for repentance. I'm laboring for repentance. See, you got to understand the fruit of uh, the outcome of repentance is mercy and forgiveness. There can be no mercy and forgiveness without repentance. Mercy and forgiveness is the outcome of those who have repented. And to repent means to change your mind for the better. To change your mind for the better. Amen. Watch this. Notice here. Amen. In, um, oh boy, this is good. Notice there in Acts 20. Let's look at what Paul preached. Amen. Acts 20. Let's pick it up in verse 21. 
He said in Acts 20, verse 20, 21, test of, well, let's pick it up in verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable to you. Notice what he's saying is, this is what's profitable for you. But have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. What did he teach publicly and from house to house? Verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't have faith in Christ and how he loved you on the cross until you repent. Amen. Grace is a result of being convicted of something. That's why the law came before the gospel. Amen. The law came to convict. The gospel came to convert. Oh, glory be to God. And the gospel can't convert unless it's preceded with repentance, changing your mind for the better. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> and repentance is something that God has to give you. It's a gift from God. And gifts have to be received. And there are terms and conditions of receiving the gift of repentance. What is the term then the condition? Here it is. Glory to God. Oh, boy, this is a good word, Pastor Mike. Look there in 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. Here's the conditions of repentance. Notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. This is the reason why people... Amen. When they repent according to the world and not according to the conditions of the gospel, they don't have an encounter with mercy and forgiveness. They still guilty. They still connected to what they've been doing wrong. They can't seem to stop. Ooh, why? Because there's no gentle, gen genuine repentance. Because genuine repentance, Bible repentance consists of godly sorrow. What does godly sorrow consist of? I'm not sorry because I got caught. I'm not sorry because what people saw and heard. I'm sorry because I hurt Jesus. Mm. Amen. I'm not sorry because I missed the blessing. I'm sorry because I hurt the one who loves me. That's godly sorrow. Ooh, glory to God. That's what works salvation. Ooh, that's what repentance consists of. Doing it unto the Lord. Ooh, caring about what he see. Caring about what he know. Caring about what he hear. You be catching yourself. Man, I shouldn't have said that. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I shouldn't have thought that. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I shouldn't have did that. See, that's godly. See, you, you're in its awareness of his presence. And you're tending to how he feels. You're minding your conscience and convictions. Ooh, that's the kind of repentance that works salvation. Any other kind is worldly. It keeps you connected to your conduct, your behavior. It doesn't overcome it. It doesn't shift you from darkness to light. The best you can get out of this is conviction. You'll never get conversion. Woo! See, when you get conversion, this is what true conversion looked like. Look there in, 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 in chapter 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's pick it up in verse 1 and 2. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. Where? In the fear of the Lord. And then he goes into verse 2, because he done genuinely repented with godly sorrow and said, receive us. This is the Apostle Paul, the one who was locking up and murdering women and children. The one that Jesus visited in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 6 on the road to Damascus, where he was on a mission to lock up, kill, and persecute the church, the body of Christ. And now he's saying here, receive us. Because we've wronged no man. We've corrupted no man. Woo! We've defrauded no man. 
See, he's living in repentance. He's living in mercy. He's living in forgiveness. He's living in the cross. He's living in the new creation that he's been made in Christ. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Woo! Glory. Amen. See, without godly sorrow, you don't have true repentance and you're going to live in condemnation where you're reminded, where you're, 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 you're questioning God's care for you. You're concerned with what people think and say. You love the praises of man than the, more than the praises of God. Man, I got to stop. I'm out of time. Boy, this is good. We're going to pick back up this Thursday. Amen. We're going to be talking about doing the works of Jesus. The work that he's been given to us to do. Amen. And at the end of this work, we're going to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That was prepared for you before the foundations of the world. This is going to be a powerful series. I want you to do me a favor if you would. Would you share this message with others? Amen. And also, amen, share our Facebook page with others. Some powerful teaching been going forth from this platform. It'll really be a blessing to others if you share it with them. Amen. Glory to God. Also, amen, partner with me, amen, in sowing seed. Amen. Contributing to our school, our academy. The information to do that is on the screen right there. Our monthly budget is 18000 a month. We've entered into the month of November, and we're believing God for this academy's budget to be met. And God works through people. The Bible says he gives us seed to sow, bread for our food. He multiplies the seed that we're sowing. He increases us in the fruits of our righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. Who else is benefiting, amen, from God giving you that job? giving you that business. Who else is benefiting from the increase that he's given to you? Mm, glory to God. I like to think that people are better off because of my promotion, because of my employment, because of my career, because of my accolades, because of my credentials. I like to think that the kingdom of God Amen. Glory to God is furthered and the interests of Jesus Christ are conveyed because of his blessing and increase upon my life. And what better way to demonstrate that is towards education, towards children. Jesus said, amen, the children are the fruit of his womb. Amen. Jesus said, suffer not the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. That's the highest type of investment. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, the information to sow your seed is on the screen. Amen. You can call the church or you can go to our Facebook page or you can go to the website, alccministries.org. Amen. And push the giving tab and it'll instruct you in how to demonstrate your love, your honor, your seed to the Lord. Amen. And to the ministry. Amen. I want to pray over you. Father, I thank you right now for everyone listening. Everyone who will listen in the future. Thank you for the anointing, your yoke destroying, burden removing power that's present amongst us to destroy all the works of the devil in the lives of your people. Thank you that you are present to set every captive free. I thank you for converting every test into testimonies, every trial into triumphs. I thank you that according to John 16, verse 33, you conquered every test, every trial, every tribulation in this world, every concern, amen, that we will have, you have already conquered it and defeated. And according to John 16, 33, you have deprived it of its power to hurt us. You have deprived it of its ability to conquer us. So we thank you that through this ministry of your word, we have been liberated and set free. We thank you for the seed that we're sowing today. We thank you for the lives that will be impacted by it. We thank you for the increase of God upon our lives. In Jesus' name, 
we have prayed and given thanks. Amen. Praise God. Well, amen. This coming up Sunday at Abundant Life Christian Center Ministries. We're going to be having, amen, our miracle healing and breakthrough service. It's going to be powerful. Amen. Sunday afternoon, 1.30, healing, miracle, and breakthrough. I'm telling you, the anointing is so strong on us where this ministry is concerned. Um, I just believe that if you'll come expecting whatever miracle, amen, glory to God, whatever breakthrough you need, whatever healing you need will manifest on your life. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. We'll see you also this coming up Thursday, midweek service, 6.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. We love you so much. It's always our prayer on your behalf that God's richest and best be yours.